Well, is South Africa ready for a borderless continent? That is indeed the big question, so let's get to it. Elections 360 starts right now. Well, good evening, South Africa. Welcome to the very, very first edition of Elections 360 for the 2024 general elections. And this is, of course, coming to you live on SABC News, SABC2, SABC Lehigh on DTT. And, of course, we have a live studio audience with us here at our studios in Auckland Park. But, of course, I'm not alone. Indeed. Good to be with you, Sakina. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to this important, important election debate. Signing for us tonight is Importime, and an important topic to kick off uh, the Elections 360 show, immigration as well as border management, as we try to give you a, a well-rounded look at the political state of play. Indeed, Blaine, and of course, uh, this is an issue that has been foregrounded by many of the electorate as yep. well as the political parties themselves. So we also decided to send a few of our producers right. over to uh, the Bybridge border post, and, and they went to a bridge yes. over the Limpopo River in a place that's colloquially known as no man's land, right. because it's neither in Zimbabwe nor is it in South Africa. And we're told that there are many young Zimbabweans hanging out there, sitting around for hours on end, uh, some of them looking for avenues of opportunity to get into South Africa. Others are doing trade. So the Election 360 team went to speak to them, as well as the border guards who are, well, looking out for them. I'm the chief border guard at Mona Bay Bridge. I'm in charge of the border guards. Our role is very simple. We maintain order. I'm going to ask you, 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 and then the other side, I'm going to ask you, for Zimbabwe. So, everyone South Africa. meaning documents. South Africa. Zimbabwe. passport. Passport. Why are you coming home and sit here with you don't have passport? I want to go and find a job. Yes, you want to go and find a job? But how are you going to find a job where else you don't have papers? We are local, we stay in Bedbridge, just to go to the tax ring and find a job and come back. We don't go far, we just to go at the tax ring and come back home. Okay. Yeah, we are trying to survive, nothing else now. I know majority of you here, from here, line here, you don't have passports, right? Yeah, but we sometimes we have passports, but you know, you travel every day, you cannot stamp the passport every day while we are coming back. How are you, sis? Your side. Your boy. Your boy. Okay. Your paper passport. Your paper. Your paper. If I deal. If I deal. Okay. So I failed to apply another. All right. All right. What your passport is in Babi Malay because the the color letter. Yeah. The reason Aluya is from South Africa is because in Malay passport is dura. In Malay country passport. The passport is three thousand two hundred. Hey. Runs. The passport is in Yenge. So, 3,200? Yes. 3, only one passport? Only one passport. Hey, we have got the passport in Mali in South Africa. Ah, I'm not sure. Okay, it costs around 400, 500, some of them. The passport? Hey. I'm going to say when you go to the passport, you go to the Mali, after South Africa. It takes to the Japan. 
Because we are going to march. We are going to see the passport. We are going to come back. We are going to come back to South Africa. We are going to see the passport. 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 Hey, I can't see him again. I can't see him. Hi. Okay. I'm going to get a slope here. I'm going to get a slope here. But I'm going to get a slope here. I'm going to get a slope here. All right. All right. Okay. Thank you, Shamaran. All right. Border guards keeping a close eye on people who are in an area called no man's land. And with many thanks to our producer, Tsile Khaswane there. Indeed, Blaine. All right, and this is, of course, where we get the ball rolling. And speaking to us this evening, we've invited five political parties to come and give us their views on this very important issue. Representing the African National Congress, uh, Dr. Aaron Mutsualedi from the Democratic Alliance. Uh, we have Mr. Adrian Rus. Mzwanele Mangi is representing the Economic Freedom Fighters. Gaten McKenzie is here on behalf of the Patriotic Alliance. And Funzi Ngobeni is our representative for Action SA this evening. So the stage is set, so let me me leave you for now. I'm headed down to the audience and this is what it's all about, right? The audience interaction, it is audience driven as well. They're going to pose questions to the people that are after their votes. Looking forward to the interactions. All right, here we go. So, gentlemen, as you may have noticed, we've got a timer right in front of you. 60 seconds is all each of you will have to make an opening statement. When it's over, it's over. So, uh, please, we're going to start here with uh, Dr. Aaron Mutsualedi to my immediate left. One minute to give us your opening statements on this matter as the ANC. Thank you very much, Sakina, and good evening to everybody. Well, Sakina, most of the issues that are raised on immigration are found on our manifesto. Firstly, we have said in our manifesto that we are going to overhaul the whole immigration system of the country to repeal the Citizenship Act passed in 1995, the Refugee Act passed in 1998, and the Immigration Act passed in 2002. We are also in the process, and you show us already implementing the issues of simplifying visas so as to help skilled people to come to our country and uh, conduct uh, 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 skills which the country might be short of. And quite nearly everything that is on our manifesto, we have already started the implementation process. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, uh, Dr. Aaron Mutoledi, and great that you didn't take up all your time, uh, which means that we can move quicker. So, Adrian Roos from the DA, your one minute starts now. Thank you very much. So, so Minister, you, you have let the country down, and your party has let the country down over the last 30 years. We started in 1994, we had 35 Border Patrol units, we now have just 15. We have an African Continental Free Trade Agreement, which is promising to take 30 million people out of poverty. And the question is, how many of those are going to be South Africans? Hardly any, because we haven't even started on the free trade area. And then we have refugees and asylum seekers that come in the country. We have a massive backlog. We complain about money. The money is provided, and that backlog is as big as ever before. So the ANC is just not serious about the implications of undocumented foreigners, but also the opportunities of visas like the Digital Nomad Visa, which can bring up to 8 billion rand a year into this country. You've let us down, Minister, and the country wants answers. Thank you so much, Adrian Roos of the DA. Let's move on to the EFF and uh, Mzwane Lemanye representing. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Sakina. Good evening, everyone. The incoming president of the EFF, Judas Malema, greets all of you, greets the whole country. <laughs> the EFF is a pan-Africanist organization. Our posture is the one that says, we don't subscribe to a mind of a chicken. The chicken is only looking in front of its beak for the next seat to pick up. We are eagles in the EFF. We see beyond the horizons. We see over the seas. We see over the mountains. This is who we are. We don't get dictated to in the EFF by the 1884, 1885 
Berlin Conference borders of the imperialists that have, have, have sown deep enmity between us. We see Africa as a whole. We see ESCOM playing a, playing a major role in electrifying the entire continent. We see Transnet building a rail from Cape to Cairo, creating jobs all along Africa. This is the kind of Africa we see. Do you know that the intra-trade of Africa in terms of tourism generated 80% of the revenue Thank of tourism you, came from intra-Africa? That's all your time. <laughs> Moving on. Gayton McKenzie, of course, here for the Patriotic Alliance. We sit in a country where 60% of young people are sitting at home without a job. 35% of adults are sitting at home without a job. In the Western Cape and in Joburg, it's very hard to go to any restaurant and find a South African working there. It's very hard to go into the security industry and find a South African. It is very hard. Every house has got illegal foreigners working there. So this eagle next to me must fly to Zimbabwe and go and work there in Zimbabwe. The minister, the, the, the minister has had 30 years to sort this problem out. He, it's over, he doesn't have a chance. This side of this one, two, three, they are our problem when it comes to illegal foreigners. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank uh, you, uh, Gate and McKenzie. So, Mr. Funzi Ngobeni, um, you, your minute starts now. Thank you very much, Sakin. I think uh, we must congratulate South Africans uh, for standing firm. You know, five years, six years ago, ten years ago, when you speak about immigration, you were labeled xenophobic. And, um, and I think we must also thank the president of Action SA and Dade Hemen Mashab. He's the first politician in 2016 when he was delivering his 100 days in office as the mayor of the city of Johannesburg to start speaking about this matter. But for many years, he has been labeled, even by the ANC, uh, Dr. Mosualedi and them, that he is xenophobic. But now, South Africans are discussing it. It's even now an issue in this, in this election, which is something that we must celebrate as South Africans. As Action SA, we are very clear that South Africa was built on the back of migrants. We must welcome all people of the world into South Africa to come and invest and to come and, and give their skills, critical skills here yeah, that we don't have. That's but all your time. They must come here yeah, legally and they must respect our laws. So, so those are your opening remarks from the five parties represented here. And of course, we're going to delve a little bit more to get more in depth on this to find out exactly what the problems are. But before we get into all of that, let's take a quick break.
Well, welcome back. This is Elections 360 coming to you tonight from the SABC's M1 studios at Auckland Park. But of course, look out for us around the country as we will be taking this show on the road as well. And speaking about taking it on the road, it's all about you, the audience, the people, whether here in studio or at home, we want to hear from you. Blaine? Yeah, Sakina, that's the whole point of debates such as this, right? And the question is, what's, what's the right fixes? There's a couple of questions that can possibly get us closer to that answer. Firstly, does secure borders equal prosperity, economic prosperity for the locals and those who are here legally? What about corruption and incompetence? What sort of effects does that have on the territorial integrity of this country? The list goes on. Do those effects or those conditions adds to the animus or the tensions between locals and foreign nationals. Let's hear directly from you now, who, those that have gathered here at M1. Your name, sir, your question. Oh, no, no, thank you so much. My name is Advice Yuma from Action SA. So mine is very simple. My question is directed to our Honorable Minister over there. I do hope that his colleagues have briefed him. Can you truthfully um, state why hundreds of young people are not paid until today with regard to Nazi Spani? And since January, there are young people seated at home still yet to report to their workplace. I'm asking for the truthfulness because the ones that are provided by uh, your disgraced premier here in Gauteng uh, are frivolous, you know. So please assist us in that and to say uh, why for the longest time this program is starting now during election because you've been in government for the longest time. You could have started this long time ago. Are you linking this now to border and immigration issues? Yes, definitely, without a doubt, because if you can look, you know, I will just give this example. Look in a restaurant. Majority of young people are loitering the street cookers, you know, without, un without employment. Right. And half of the people who are employed in restaurants are, are foreigners, and, you know, it, it's bad for us. I guess we can ask uh, Dr. Mozzoleri with regards to the new regulations on the general work visa and some of the changes now. Basically sidestepping uh, the Department of Labor, but we'll get some take, uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Mozzoleri's take. Your question, your name. Hi, good evening. My name is Mpombata. So my question goes to the EFF. You guys are talking about the free African trade. My question is, how will the... Um, already in South Africa, we're facing a problem of cybersecurity, weak policies and laws. How does the EFF plan to solve cyber attacks and I illegal tra trades when um, borders are open? Already there's an issue of drugs. What more will happen if the borders are open, which means drugs will come in. And you know, already we know that in South Africa, every hour a young girl is being human trafficked. What's going to happen if borders are being open now? Right. Thank you very much indeed. Let's get one more question on this side, then I'll go down. Your name and your question. Good evening, everyone. My name is Mercy, and my question is directed to the EFF. Um, he spoke about unemployment, creating jobs, and my question will be, what will you do? What is your action plan for jobs? If you are not in power now and are unable to give jobs to the people, how will you do that when you are in power? All right, thank you very much indeed. Let's get some uh, questions from the other side as well. Look, the South Africa has over 5,000 kilometers in terms of land border, right? Uh, 72 ports, 71 ports of entry, 52 are land. Uh, we have about 10 international airports and nine seaports. So the umbrella question is, how secure are those ports of entry? Let's get your name and your question. Uh, my name is Sharon. Uh, my question goes to the ANC and the EFF. As young adults and young ones of South Africa, what are you guys going to do for our, for, for our South Africans that doesn't have currently jobs? Because all the foreigners are taking our jobs and they um, uh, abuse the South Africans in their workplace. What are you guys going to do about it? All right, thank you very much indeed. Let's uh, head over to the panel. Sakina. Thanks, Blaine, and thanks to the audience. So uh, those uh, questions from this round going to the ANC and the EFF. Um, um, Dr. Mutswaledi, let me start with you in terms of what was posed to you. Sakina, Nazi Spani has got nothing to do with the immigration problem that has brought us here. And uh, I think it will be better to ask this question to the Premier of Gauteng. 
for the simple reason that, yes, for the simple reason that uh, I did not look into the details. I know what Nazi span is because I don't see the relationship uh, with this topic that we're having here. But on our side, most of the people who are working here, uh, who, who are uh, uh, working here as general work uh, people, is because in the Immigration Act, which we are changing now in the white paper, it talks about people having to go to the Department of Labor to get a certificate that there is no South African who can perform that part of, type of job. And then with that certificate, they come to home affairs. That has proven not to be very practical, but that's what Parliament passed in 2002. So in its place, we are replacing it with what we call a point-based system, that to come and do general work in South Africa, you must score certain points. And the points are going to be, uh, 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 we are going to put them out in the public, to gazette them for public comments, for South Africans to tell us uh, whether they agree with particular points or not. These are things about age, about experience, about qualifications, about where you have been working before, et cetera, et cetera. And we think that will solve this problem, not rhetoric of just sitting here making noise. Remember, issues of immigration are, inter are, are very serious globally. It's not only a South African problem. It's a global problem if you check all over the world mm. where they are dealing with this problem. So they need a sober mind, and we have put that sobriety in our white paper and in all the proposals that we are making. The, 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 the issue uh, uh, of, of foreigners taking jobs will be resolved by this. Secondly, b because all countries, when they want immigration, you want mostly skilled people. Now, I want to answer a question from EFF when they started about Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. The Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement have got five areas of engagement. None of them talks about open borders. They are talking about goods moving freely through borders, people moving freely through borders, but with documentation. Certain tariffs <laughs> being reduced, certain tariffs being reduced, and certain goods not being taxed, etc. That's Africa Continental okay. Free Trade Agreement. All right. We are trading with each other. And, and so it's a misnomer to say it means there must be no border. It's not true at all. Uh, just a quick question before I move on to Mr. Mani, Dr. Motualedi. Um, with regard to the white paper and regardless of what provisions government comes up with, how is that? You spoke about the practicality of it. So how are you going to give effect to it if you do not have the necessary capacity in the relevant departments to actually police this? No, we are building capacity. If you look at the the Volindela project, which was done by uh, Mavusum Simang, asked by the president to review our visas. He talks about this issue of capacity at all, both the personnel and technology level. Now, what I'm saying about the, the uh, Immigration Act uh, today, which is uh, in Regulation 18 of the Immigration Act, I am not saying we lack capacity. I'm saying it's impractical. What has been put there, which was passed by Parliament, it's not easy, even if you have got staff, because as I'm saying, let me explain again. It says anybody who must come and do general work, even with documentation, must go to the Department of Labor, and the prospective employer must pr prove that a search was made in the country, and no South African has been found who can do that job. We are talking here of general work, which includes domestic work, hospitality, uh, agriculture in farms, you can't come and prove that I looked all over South Africa, I couldn't find yeah. a domestic worker. No, so, we can't. Yeah, so and we're going to go to the offices and we yeah, may or may not find it's people impractical. there. That's why we are changing it. Correct. In home right. affairs now. Mr. Mani? Thank you. Um, very briefly, Nasi Spani is just a scam. Uh, what, what Panyaza has done there, what Panyaza has done there, He's just consolidated a lot of already existing vacancies in other departments and put them into this thing and called Nazi Span. So there's no new job that they've been created. It's just a feeling of vacancies. So it's just a scam. Moving forward. 
the issue of the um, uh, well, I heard I think I heard something about cyber trade and all of that, uh, and I wasn't sure how uh, the installation of borders is going to stop cyber trade, unless we are misunderstanding each other. Because as things stand, cyber trade with or without borders will happen, uh, and all of that. So I just didn't understand the question. But be that as it may, the EFF is talking about one passport for Africa. You must remember, we said we are eagles, not chickens. So we're seeing the continent as a whole. This is who we are. As eagles, we're seeing the whole continent, we're seeing one passport. When you have a passport, that means you are documented. So this notion that uh, the EFF is uh, supporting illegality must fall. There's no such a thing. When we say one passport, how can you have a passport without, without uh, uh, being known who you are? It's just uh, a fallacy. What we are saying is that we must not live our lives in terms of the dictates of the imperialists. If you go to Europe, this nonsense of these borders that they're dealing with, with us here is not existent in Europe. I was personally in France. I took a train from France to Switzerland. I was not asked one thing about a passport from one country to another. That happens. So all we are saying is that we must see Africa as a whole uh, and not just see these little things like a, 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 a ch chicken, chicken mentality. We must get rid of that. We must see... We must see... We must see, I mean, this, this notion, uh, we, we, must see, we must see how Africa can cooperate with each other. Sagina, we're sitting here. Yeah. We're sitting here, we're sitting here with, with resources in Africa that if we were to properly utilize and do the economies of scale in Africa, we'll be able to make sure that the entire continent is well established okay. to fight the entire uh, Mr. world. Mani? Okay. What is the problem? Uh, before I come back to you, Blaine, Mr. McKenzie, you wanted to say something. Can, can I just con conclude? <laughs> I have to conclude. I, have to I conclude. thought you were done. I have to conclude. I thought you were done. We spoke about massive jobs. In terms of job creation, what you are saying is that the EFF is going to embark on a huge industrialization program or going to massify jobs. What you're going to have, we're going to make sure that manufacturing is brought back into the country. We're not going to have assembly plants anymore. Or we'll have assembly plants, but over and above assembly plants, mm. we'll have manufacturing plants. All right. So the issue of job creation is key in the EFF. We'll do agro-processing, we'll do beneficiation. All right. Jobs Mr. is Manny? going to be fashionable. Thank you. Mackenzie? You see, we must expose where people are trying to not tell the truth. He's been to France. I've been to France a few months ago. France, number one, doesn't have an unemployment passing 50%. In France, there's not 84 people dying every day. So let's not come here and compare ourselves to countries that does not have the problems that we are having in this country. No one walks around in Europe, when you have an illegal passport in Europe or you have no passport, you will never go and open a shop in full view of everybody. Those things don't happen in Europe. So just for the people that have not been to France, I've been there on your behalf to despair lives like this. Then, you see, I want to unpack something when we talk about open borders. One Africa. When there's war in Burundi, when there's war in Mali, when you have an open one passport, those people can come in here that are fighting. We have a problem in this country. We have a serious problem. Nigerians have taken over the drug trade in this country, prostitution, they do what they like. Let me make you the last example. Tax shops, the law, let's talk about the law. Let's not talk about what EFF say or PA. Let's talk about the law. The law says for you to come here and open a business, you need to come with an investment amount. When you come with an investment amount, if you don't come with an investment amount, you have to have paperwork. So all illegal foreigners, all illegal foreigners here are committing a crime, number one. I just want to say two things. They're committing a crime by being here illegally according to the rules of Minister Mutsualedi. If you don't, you must have a passport, number one. Our president of this country goes to a tax shop, a crime scene, and he goes and congratulates a criminal there 
and say your business, your crime business must grow. Illegal foreigners will go under PA government. Abba <laughs> Ham there. And um, uh, Funzin Gobeni, yeah. hold that thought. We need to take a break. We're going to come back. We'll give you and Adrian Ruiz an opportunity, and then we'll go back to our audience for more questions. But for now, let's take a quick break. And welcome back to Elections 360. Just a quick introduction once more of our panel this evening. Dr. Aaron Mutsualedi from the African National Congress, from the Democratic Alliance, Mr. Adrian Ruiz, Mzwanele um, Manyi representing the Economic Freedom Fighters, Patriotic Alliance represented by Gaten McKenzie, and of course, Mr. Funzi Ngobeni from African, uh, of Action SA. Now, Action SA, Mr. Ngobeni, you wanted to say something before the break. I wanted to say two things, uh, uh, Sakina. Firstly, <clears throat> to the minister. Um, you see, they always change legislation, even if the legislation is not a problem. I think uh, Gaten has already demonstrated that legislation is not a problem. And we have submitted our submissions um, uh, on the white paper, because we believe that that white paper um, apparently took about four years for it to be reviewed. It's just a tool for elections. They're not serious about doing anything about, about the Home Affairs Department. They're not serious about doing anything about immigration. On that document, we have proposed that the critical list, uh, critical uh, work list, it needs to be updated regularly. Skills list. Yes, critical skills list, it needs to be updated regularly. Not, not what they are proposing. They are proposing that, um, that they're going to, uh, to review it now and then they'll review it. Because the thing is that, um, you know, skills in our country, they change because technology is, is coming into the, into, into the space now. With regards to the EFF, they are saying they are, they are, they are, they are for industrial, industrial, industrialization. Sakina, let's, let's be clear. How do you then industrialize 
when you've got porous borders and they're encouraging people to come into our country illegally. For us to be able to industrialize, we need the rule of law. We need to deal with crime. We need to ensure that our borders are closed. We need to deal with counterfeit goods. Because imagine, we are going to start manufacturing businesses under the EFF. They'll be competing with counterfeit goods that are on, on North Street. It's not going to happen. You know? So we need to make sure that we close all those gaps so that we can be able to make sure that our people are being employed, are prioritized, and then, and then we are able to see growth in the economy and, 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 and see the level of unemployment coming down as well. And the assumption, I deal with this. Yeah. Sakina. Yeah. The, the assumption, think, Mr. Ngobeni, is that counterfeit goods are something that is brought in by uh, the immigrants to South Africa. Is that what you're saying? Yes, uh, Sakina, in the main, but also we want to uh, lay the blame also on the, on the Department of Home Affairs and SARS, because custom, the role of custom is it, it lies with government and the authorities being able to implement the rules that are there. At the moment, it's, it's everybody's uh, 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 business. They do as they wish. These products are coming through either by sea, either the by land, but it, we see them on the ground, and we see buses moving from, from Limpopo coming into this country with those illegal goods. So the same thing with cigarettes, by the way, um, which I, I think EFF is quite interested on, because yeah. cigarette, <laughs> cigarette smuggling, that is happening in our country. And we see, because what's happening is that we've got, we've got these businesses running, uh, uh, cigarette, producing cigarettes in the country, mm -hmm. but most of it is being actually bring it to the country you. illegally uh, through our borders. And Can that I needs to stop. To I have to correct this, uh, Sakina. Uh, no, I correct not this? now. Um, Mr. Ruiz. Yes. And then... Yes. Sakina. Dr. Mutsaledi. Can Mr. Ruiz have his yeah, moment? And then you can respond to all okay. of them. Yeah, thank you. I, th I think it's a bit much to say that we should just have a free-for-all. Um, freedom in this country comes with responsibility. It's freedom under rule of law, not just a free-for-all. We cannot have anybody just coming into this country. So there is a freedom of movement protocol of the African Free Trade Agreement. It allows 90-day visa-free entry and the African passport. Then it's the right to do business, which is a separate element, and then it's the right of establishment. But you cannot just have a free-for-all. And the challenge we have in this country, in the United Kingdom, there are 5,000 immigration officials. And here we have 770. And the UK is the size of Limpopo. So with this free trade agreement and before it can happen, we need to actually get a reasonable number of uh, immigration officials because they're not getting around, they're not going out, and they're not finding undocumented foreigners and deporting them. They're not implementing the law. And therefore, we're stuck in the situation where it is a free-for-all, unfortunately, at the moment. Dr. Mutswale? The, the EFF was yeah, attacked. Yeah. I have to respond. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mutswale? Man, you relax and that, you relax. Yeah, I, I want to say two things. Let's understand as we are sitting here that we are not an island. We are part of the world. And there are rules, there are rules that have been established on these issues of migration. The United Nations established the International Office on Migrations with rules the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees came with a convention in 1951 with 46 articles that governs all these things. The Organization of African Unity, which is now AU, came with rules about uh, uh, refugee and asylum seekers in 1969. So we are not working in a vacuum. I want to respond to uh, uh, Funzi. You know, small knowledge kills at times, especially if you expose it in front of people. Number one. He is talking about something which is happening and says proposed by Action SA. The critical skills list, we have already reviewed it three times. No. We're not, we are not waiting for four years, Sami. We are not talking about coming to do. We are already reviewing it. So that is how it is ticked. Please subtract it. The, the problem, then he said there's no problem with the law. I'll refer him tonight. Go and read a judgment done by Cameron, Judge Cameron in the Constitutional Court, which is unanimous judgment, Ruta versus the Minister of Home Affairs, and you read there what is wrong with the laws. I can even refer you to chapters, which, I mean, uh, uh, what you call, uh, sections which, was, which you must read, like Section 10, because, 
don't shout. Don't shout. I'm giving him facts. I'm actually educating him. Oh. There he is mentioning. Yes. There, Judge Cameron is mentioning the contradiction between the Refugee Act passed in 1998 and the Immigration Act passed in 2002. In the white paper, we are showing that the Citizenship Act is actually a replica of the 1949 Act, which you don't want, which was passed during the Union. So there is everything wrong with the Act. Your leader was misleading you. Bring him here for education, and I'll show him all the areas that need the Act to be changed. Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Manyi, and then we have to go to the audience. They have some questions as well. A, a very important point to make is that the EFF is not a proxy for imperialists. We are here to drive an agenda of South Africa and Africa. We are not here to drive an agenda that is imposed by Europeans here. The issue of industrialization, the east of industrialization, the reason he, the Action SA is uh, trivializing it is because they want to continue to support Europe. This is what they want to do. We want to create jobs here. Yeah? We want to make sure that to make, we want to make sure that there's beneficiation of our minerals. We want to make sure that there's agro processing that's going to create jobs. The issue of crime, crime is crime. You must not, when you deal with crime, start to give it a nationality. Crime is crime. It doesn't matter. It, there is no better crime because it's committed by a South African. Crime is crime. Whoever perpetrates crime must be arrested. This is our position. All right, Mr. McKenzie, hold that thought. Blaine? Yes, yeah, so, you know, some have argued that the principle of pan-Africanism shouldn't promote illegal entry, right? Now, having said that, how do you balance the needs of supporting those who are forced to leave their countries of origin and the local population? Let's get some answers as well as more questions from the audience. Your name is? Hi, my name is Mponya Mate, and I have a question for the ANC. And basically what I've understood is our honorary minister has told us about how the white paper on immigration, citizenship and refugee project, uh, protection works to change the system and to simplify the visa process. So my question to you is, don't you think that there also needs to be a way to cater for people who are currently stuck in the digital divide, people who do not have access to internet connection, because that's a big hindrance to immigrants who are really trying to work around the e-visa application system. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Also, something that came out of the white paper when it was released is that the Department of Home Affairs says they have no idea how many illegal immigrants are here in South Africa. Shouldn't there be a well-coordinated strategy in order to track that? We will find out after the break.
Welcome back. You're watching Elections 360 as we engaging with audience members. We have a few minutes left on S2. Thereafter, we'll go for an extra half an hour on Channel 404. Let's get more questions from the audience. Your name and your question, sir. Uh, my name is Solim Kize. I have two quick questions, one to the PA, one to the EFF. As brief as possible. Yes. PA, what will mass deportation benefit South Africans? Then to the EFF, is that the forefathers of Pan-Africanist, mm. even Liberia itself, the one that was birthed on Pan-Africanism, they never brought down borders. Which part of Pan-Africanism that says to them, everyone must converge in, in South Africa? Oh, thank you very much indeed. Just remember that our question is, is South Africa ready for a borderless continent? Absolutely, and my, I've got a comment for the minister because the minister just stated here that uh, they will, the ANC government will repeal immigration laws, but they, are, they want us to trust them again. They created the mess, now they want the voters to trust them again to fix the mess that they created. We, the voters shouldn't listen to that, it's never gonna happen. The ANC won't fix immigration in this country. Going to the DA, the DA doesn't have an immigration policy. It doesn't have, in their top five priority list, they don't note any immigration, there's no immigration of the DA. Now to the gentleman of the EFF, the very capable uh, Mr. Mani. My question to him is, how will the EFF finance, he, how will the EFF finance its uh, free African trade uh, policy as well as the free movement of African people? Because in your manifesto, sir, it does state that you want to create a, a passport for African people. And moving to the PA, excuse me about that. We have very limited time. I'm just going to leave it there for now, right? Just I'm going to try and squeeze in one more question, then we're going to get some answers. Um, hello to everybody. As a student of the University of Johannesburg and somebody who dwells on public policy, I would like to refrain from being ambiguous and actually be ambitious in my approach and actually dedicate this time to addressing the elephant in the room, which is immigration and, you know, the trade that's been happening in South Africa. Given the fact that South Africa has a lot of challenges and we already have capacity issues, what specific legislature are we looking at from the NANC point of view? Because I would like to believe that you guys can do better. Um, from an ANC point of view, what policies are we looking at, statutory framework are we willing to implement on behalf of South Africans to actually make sure that we, yeah, we reap the fruits of this immigration policy? All right, thank you very much indeed. Answer, Sakina. Indeed. All right, let's start with uh, Mr. Gate and Mackenzie there. Um, your answer, please. All right. I think, you know, it's very heartbreaking listening to the leaders here. People speak about laws and they're trying to educate each other about laws. Let's talk about the reality on the ground. Reality on the ground is that illegal foreigners are accessing, they have access to our hospitals. In Rahima Musa, illegal foreigners are giving birth while South African women are giving birth on the floor while illegal foreigners are on the bed. Let's look at the housing list. Foreigners are applying for housing. Let's look at the job market. The job market is dominated, the service industry, securities, waiters, is dominated by illegal foreigners. Our people are sitting in Alex and Soweto and Aldo's and Mitchell's plane, and they have no jobs. The DA people are hiring illegal foreigners, the owners of the industry, because they don't want to pay UIF. They don't want people that are unionized. We are sitting here with a crisis. Now to answer the question, what the Patriotic Alliance will do, once you mass deport all of them, that's illegally here. Listen, for EFF it's impossible, not for the PA. Once you must deport, uh, once you must deport all illegal foreigners, already, already, you will have restaurants, you will have companies without jobs and stuff like that. Now they must not talk, Mr. Mani, lastly, Mr. Mani speaks about, uh, we never said people must have passports. We, know we said one passport for Africa. But his president said people must find creative ways. What is that? Now he's talking a different story. I am saying, this is not the, we are not the only country. If I've been long in politics, this problem would have been sorted out. I'm new to politics. If I've been long here, this problem would have been sorted out because we cannot sit here. And then this, 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 this is what, what Leader Funzi said. There's a problem on the ground. Let us leave this showboating. 
The people are hungry. The people don't have jobs. People can't access health care. People can't get housing. Because wherever you go, and they are so arrogant, because they have leaders that are protecting them. This arrogance will finish on the 29th of May, mm. um, before, before, before I get to Mr. Manye, uh, Mr. McKenzie, Mr. McKenzie, you were at the um, river crossing there between South Africa and Zimbabwe. Uh, we saw that on social media. So how far did you go and what did you establish the problem to be there? We have no border management police. And if we do have them, they were not there. We were there. We saw people coming over. Now I want to show you about crime. When you come in and you kill somebody in South Africa, if you are not documented, the cops has no chance in hell to find the person that killed any person. We saw it, takes, it took an old lady four and a half minutes. I'm talking about somebody who was 71, to cross from there to, to South Africa. Now imagine if you have people coming in, they kill people, which is happening in this country, and they go back. We blame the cops because we say, oh, we have hopeless cops. But the cops need to start with fingerprints. These people are undocumented. We found Armageddon there. It's free for all. There's no border at the moment, to be honest with you. Terrorists can come in. Killers can come in. We, want to, we are saying the only way to stop this thing, you have to construct a wall like in other countries. How long will that wall be? What's the distance of that border? Pardon? What's the distance of that border, Mr. McKenzie? No. You see, what you are having, you have, you have 220 kilometers that was unsupervised. Now, when I say a wall should be built, I'm not saying a wall should be built in isolation. I am saying a wall should be built with soldiers that are, that are trained. What we're having now, guys, you see, once you've not traveled, you don't see how other countries are serious about fighting crime. Uh, Mr. Mani says, they're not following imperialists and he's going for the imperialists, but he's just talking about how he went to the imperial state. He's just from France. So mm. also, what did he do in France? All right. And I, I, I think uh, Dr. Mutsualedi will answer more to that, but I think, if I'm not mistaken, the length of that uh, river and what needs to be covered is more than 600 kilometers uh, from uh, going all the way through to Botswana as well, coming all the way um, to the north uh, at Zimbabwe. But Minister Mutsualedi will speak to that. Mr. Manyi? Yeah, very briefly. First, let's deal with these creative ways. Uh, you know, at Sakina, the EFF deployed me to the Eastern Cape. I've just seen how creative these young people are going to school. They do this. Uh, they've got no money to go to school. They, 10 kilometers, they found a creative way to go to school. They go to school and back go bonzi. This is what they do. So there is nothing in that statement that says creative ways. That unless you, you're a criminal yourself, that you think he meant criminality, yeah. because that's why you think. That's why it's, it never said, it just said creative ways. And I'm saying to you, I've seen in practical, in real life, what those children do in the Eastern Cape. 10 kilometers, they go to school and back this way. That's a creative way to go to school. But the problem we're sitting with, the problem we're sitting with in South Africa is that of a not growing economy. In the 2000s, in the 2000s, this discussion would be totally irrelevant because the economy was growing. This is why it's important not to have a chicken approach. You must see the big picture. <laughs> when you see the big picture, when you see, if, if, you, look at the, if you look at the manifesto of the EFF uh, 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 Sagina, you will see that it's very clear about what needs to be done. It's very ambitious. They think, when they look at it, they say, this is unachievable. Let me mention very briefly five things that we will do to make sure that there is serious money in this country. The first thing that the EFF will do is to deal with the issue of transfer pricing. Transfer pricing, transfer pricing is the biggest money eroder in the economy of this country by way of base erosion profit shifting. 
This is mainly done by large corporates that undervalue their operations so that they don't pay tax. So fiscals is robbed every year. The amount of money that we can save from dealing with transfer pricing is no less than 250 billion. That's what we'll save uh, as the EFF. Secondly, we'll capacitate the state to collect the, 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 the revenues. Right now, you have municipalities that go around uh, getting electricity money, but they don't pay that over to ESCOM. So the EFF will make sure that to deploy people in those municipalities to make sure that the, the, the electricity money gets to ESCOM where it should get to. Thirdly, Mr. Manu, we'll increase... Mr. Manu, I, I have to finish if I this may. No, no, no. Let me just bring you back to the topic at hand. L l let's stick to the immigration yeah, and wait, border wait, management wait, issues. EFF, I can understand. Um, so that's all I'm saying. Let's just bring it back to that. Because um, on the issue, for example, where you speak about um, goods coming into the country illegally, uh, yes, we absolutely want to hear about that. But I think some of the other manifesto issues are issues to be canvassed in later shows. Uh, so I want us to just stick to the issue at hand. We're talking about immigration and, of course, the border management in South Africa. Uh, so if we could stick to that, please. Ah, already. You see two viewers. Uh, we will be back uh, with them next week, live from KZN. So thank you very much indeed for joining us. For myself, Blaine Herman, and Sakina Kamwendo. We continue on SABC News Channel 404. The debate continues. Uh, that was just a goodbye to our SABC2 viewers. So our SABC2 viewers have left us, but we continue here on SABC News. So um, just uh, coming back very briefly uh, to the conversation at hand, uh, Mr. Ruiz and then um, Dr. Mutsaledi. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, it's always funny when somebody says the DA doesn't have a policy. Um, and the one thing about DA's policies is they're all properly costed. Now, Mr. McKenzie was talking about reality, and I saw a number of members in the uh, audience were laughing. Um, if we talk about a wall, to build a wall across the 4,800 kilometers of the border will cost about 1.2 trillion rand. That'll be about 20,000 rand for each and every person in the entire country of South Africa. So it's not going to happen. 1.2 trillion rand. Then deportation. Even if we said there were 5 million illegal foreigners here, we were going to deport them all. It would take 20 years. If we did it at the rate, the record rate was 2006, when 260,000 were deported. So let's say it's going to take 20 to 40 years to deport everybody. So what's going to happen in the meantime? What's going to be left? So I think when we come with solutions, they need to be properly costed and realistic. And we shouldn't create false hopes. So what the DA is saying, what the DA is saying is that we need to implement the laws in the country. Dr. Mutsualeni? Yes. So we yeah. need to implement the Thank laws you. inside the country Thank you and very cut much. corruption, because that is what is happening here. That is why people can walk through the... the that is why people can... Yes. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, S Sakina, I... I, I don't have to answer to guide and those who are at this level have actually answered it. Yeah, they've given him an answer. Uh, because we need to be realistic. Sakina, let me give proper figures here. The, the border, the land border around South Africa is 4,472 kilometers long. Guyton McKenzie and his team were only on 100 meter street where they were standing. <laughs> And they believe you do the border on 100 meters. It's 4,472 kilometers. That's where we need to deploy border guards. And we, we deploy them strategically. For instance, for instance, in this 4,472 kilo, 472 kilometers, the longest distance is between us and Mutuana is 1,500 kilometers. There is no problem there. We don't experience a big problem. Secondly, 
I want to state it very clear. There is no border anywhere in the world that exists that has not been breached. Gaetan doesn't know because he was not fighting for freedom. During, during, during the struggle for freedom, can you, can, you, can you tell that gentleman I'm dis debating with this leader, not him? Yeah, he's at a very low level. Can you keep quiet? Yes, during, during apartheid, Sakina, the borders were fortresses, but we were able to take people out to fight for freedom. Some of us did so, yes. Freedom fighters were going out of that. So anywhere in the world, this wall is talking about is just hanging in the air. It's hot ash in other ways, you know? <laughs> then we've got a sea border of 3,900 kilometers. All those are being policed. And he comes here and says, no, there's no border at all and all. If there was no border there, you would have seen flames. Our border guards are working day and night, not on that 100 kilometer street. They are working day and night. And, and Sakina, we've got figures. We've got figures. Just in one year of being established, they stopped 149 cars being stolen to go out of the country. They stopped 65,000 people coming illegally into the country. They stopped a lot of things and they are still new. Before, before the end of next month, we'll be introducing 400 extra border guards. So there's no problem, an issue of not being bothered there. Um, Mr. Ngobeni? Yeah, no, I, I, I think the, Dr. Mazzoletti is, is tired, Chief. Is, uh, um, uh, you see, and, and, and he's tired, but the arrogance is still there at the top, you know? I think, I think the ANC must acknowledge that they failed this country. Um, the Department of Home Affairs, instead of him focusing on laws and legislation, he must be focusing on sorting out the structural issues there at Home Affairs. You can ask him today, how many of Home Affairs officials have been suspended of corruption? And how many of them have been convicted and so forth, you know? You can ask him today, how many of his senior officials are currently on leave, but they've been suspended? You know, you can ask him this question because the issue is structural. It's not the, the legislation that they are trying to change and everything, wasting time and actually want, wanting us to, South Africans to think that they are doing something whereas they're not doing anything. He's tired, they must, they, it's, it's easy, they must, they, must, they must allow the new government to come in and resolve the issues that are, that are in home affairs. You are, of course, watching Sakina. Elections 360 Sakina. here on SABC News. Even Hold up, Dr. Butzoleri. And um, because at this rate, we're not going to get the audience to participate. Uh, but of course, um, very important questions being raised uh, by the panel to each other. Hopefully, the answers are satisfactory to some. Uh, how do the uh, historical, political, the social, uh, the economic factors, how do those actually influence our attitudes towards immigrants in this country? But let's hear your questions, Blaine. Yeah, that's an important point, Sakina. Okay, let's get more burning questions now. Your name, sir, and where are you from? Ewan Dawkins from Wits. Um, my question really is to Mr. McKenzie and Action SA. I'm very glad Mr. McKenzie brought up the issue of a war. In 2016, Trump came into office with the largest military budget in the world, with the largest economy in the world, and they could not stop immigration. With your admission of our incapacities of the state, how do you believe the state under your control will be able to stop that? if the United States couldn't. Secondly, you're very good at analyzing surface level issues, but there's no analysis of why the immigrants are coming in the first place. There's no analysis of US imperialism in Congo in sanctions on Zimbabwe. Is it because your friends are with the US? And if you come into power, how are you going to solve the issue of them coming in? Thank you very much indeed. Important questions, we're going to get some answers now. Let me go over to the other side. We heard a, a briefing today as well from the Border Management Authority saying that since the deployment of the border guards, they managed to intercept about 281,000 people that are trying to come in here illegally. Is that good enough? There are still capacity issues. Let's get more questions. Your name and your question. 
Oh, hi, I'm Elizabeth from Zone 12, Ward 65, Jomo Disa Branch. So my question goes to my party, my leader there. Um, I want to ask you that um, based on our manifesto and our experience, how do we resolve the issue of refugees? And how can um, Democratic Alliance re bring change towards South Africa ever since if they were to be in, in, in part like... All right, let's get one more question and then we'll go get some answers. Your name. Well, good evening. My name is Silo. Uh, my name is Mabedevele. I'm not going to ask a question to the Gupta ben beneficiaries and apologists. I do not want to talk to uh, Gucci revo revolutionaries. My question is directed at Action SA. How do you plan on correcting the failure of BMA and ANC around the issue of immigration? We have um, we, I mean, we have people coming to SA to open up saloon, colleges that are not even registered. Lastly, Umdala, please stop being arrogant. You are a public representative. All right, thank you very much, Adil. Sakina, let's throw it back to you for some answers. Right, uh, thank you so much. Um, uh, let me start, uh, Dr. Motswaledi. Yeah, Sakina, I am not being arrogant. I'm just educating the uneducated leaders. You see, there's no way. I've never been arrogant in my life. Firstly, Sakina, whatever new government comes in, it will never be Action SA. Let's underline that. Number two, it will never be. Number two, you see, these parties that are owned by one person are problematic. Because you must go and ask him what to answer. He complained about the acts. I referred him to the judgments of constitutional court, which he must go to read, which shows that there is a problem in legislation. Go and read paragraph 53 of the judgment on Alex Ruta versus the Minister of Home Affairs. You will hear what the judges are saying about the gap between two pieces of legislation, the Immigration Act and the Refugee Act. Go and read paragraph 48 about the irreconcilable difference between the Immigration Refugee Act. It's in the same judgment. Go and read paragraph 30 where you say that act has gone beyond what uh, even the international conventions are saying. Now, instead of going to check that, he is saying I'm tired and that's arrogant. Instead of answering to this, these are facts. These are facts. And they are facts which come from a court of law. But he can't accept the facts because he must go and ask his leader how to answer this question. I come from a movement which is a movement for the people. I can answer, and they'll be happy about that. Thank you. Um, let's go to Mr. Ngobeni yes. and come back. Yeah, okay. yeah no, I, 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 was, I was going to respond. I'm not going to respond to Dr. Mazzoledi. He's an elder. Um, <laughs> the, 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 I mean, some of the issues we know that are causing immigration, and you are correctly saying uh, the government of Zimbabwe is also the cause of this. And, um, but this is, the, this is the government that has been supporting ZANU-PF, even when ZANU-PF was, uh, was losing elections, you know? And, and, and this, these are the people that, that, that have been uh, propping up that government even today. We are saying all those leaders of ZANU-PF will not enter this country once Action SA takes, uh, takes power. They need, they need to go to and sort out their country and get their people to be able to, um, to vote in a free and fair election and stop their corruption um, and, and be able to, and, and in that way, you'll be able to limit uh, a lot of, of, of Zimbabweans coming to the country. What, what, what we are saying with regards to BMA, um, yes, it is there, but it needs to be, it needs to be empowered more. It needs to work closer with the SAPS. We need to get the South African National Defense Force as well to be, to be there. But we are also looking at technological solutions, Dr. Masolid, that we need technological solutions to be able to assist us, to be able to manage the borders as well. Because not, I mean, boots on the ground is fine, but we need to also tap into the technology so that we can be able to address the situation in our borders. Thank you very right. much. Thank you. Yes. There's few things that there's few things that, that I hate, like a person telling me if that person couldn't get it right, how do you think you're gonna get it right? Yeah. We are not the USA. Let's start there. You see, South Africa has the highest 
unemployment figure in the world. Our children don't have jobs. Now, I can't care about the reasons. We are not the policemen of the world. We are not the father of the world. We've got bigger problems than Zimbabwe. We've got bigger problems than every country in Africa. Just don't go far. Just go with, with unemployment and go with our crime stats. We are number one in Africa. We are number one uh, when it comes to joblessness. We are number one when it comes to crime. Now, our thing is to, f our thing is to fight that. Now, you can't come to me and tell me the reason why Zimbabweans are here, the reasons why Nigerians are here, the reasons, the reason why I'm sitting here and the people that pays all these government officials and Minister Mitsualeri sitting here. It is not the tax of the illegal foreigners. It, he's got a, a duty to look after South Africa first yeah. before he looks after everybody. Yeah. So I don't care. The Patriotic Alliance doesn't care really about all the reasons that being advanced of why we have illegal foreigners. We do care first for our country. If there's war here in this country now, Zimbabweans, Burundi, people from Burundi, everywhere, they will come and take their citizens first. They will leave us here. So let's fix our country before we worry about outside countries. Thank you. Mr. Mani? Yeah. yeah. Sakina, I know I feel sorry for the minister because he's got an impossible task. You know, if you look at the number of permits that he has to manage, it's about 13 permits. So there's a whole range of permits that he needs to manage here in here. So he's got a, a difficult job. But the biggest problem uh, that this country faces, as I said, in the past when the economy was good, this discussion would have been irrelevant. I think it's important that we must be aware that we're just fighting over crumbs. What is important, is, once again, is to be the eagle, not to be the chicken. Now, when you do that, when you do that, you begin to see, Sakina, that South Africa, on a world scale, is number one platinum producer. World scale, yes, uh, South Africa. Why aren't we using that to leverage that, to make sure that uh, uh, we take the country to the next level? On a world scale, South Africa is in the top 10 in terms of iron ore production. On a world scale, South Africa is in the top seven in coal production. On a world scale, DRC is number one on cobalt production. On a world scale, da, uh, uh, Botswana is number two on diamond production. So Africa is a powerhouse. What we need to do is to ensure that everybody has got one passport, everybody is identifiable. We agree with everybody being identifiable, having a passport. One passport for everybody. We create South Afri Africa as an economic hub. Once we have Africa as an economic hub, all the problems, the push factors of Africa will be resolved. There'll be no reason for anybody to leave their country. So you must see the bigger picture. We cannot solve the problems of South Africa by chasing people away. The problem will be solved by building the economy of Africa, reduce the push factors of Africa, then everybody's happy where they are. Mr. Ruiz? Yeah, thank you. So, so what the DA will do about refugees is pretty much like everything else. And what you find in, in home affairs at the moment, uh, after much questioning and backwards and forwards, we found the minister saying that the reason why visas are so far behind is because the people that are there don't have the legal qualifications. They don't know what they're doing, essentially. And so they have to actually get people in that know what they're doing. And so that, that is why the DA will do away with cater deployment and get in people that actually know what they're doing. They can adjudicate these things as fast as possible so that you don't have a refugee waiting for 10 years in the country, able to work here, able to live, able to access services. That that is quickly adjudicated, that they can either then leave or they can stay here and have their rights uh, uh, protected. And then secondly, to jail corrupt people for the minimum of 15 years. Minimum of 15 years for corruption. I mean, we have an obesity report. It's taking years and years and years. And those people that are issuing fake documents inside the Department of Home Affairs are still there. The report's been around for about two years now. They are sitting there still doing it. And so we're going to be very harsh on corruption, 15-year jail sentences, 
and putting competent people in that can actually do the job. Well, uh, we have to take okay. another break here on Elections 360, but very interesting points being made by our panelists, very interesting sentiments and questions being asked from our studio audience, and uh, someone spoke about analysis and analyzing what is going on. And I think one of the other elephants in the room is who and what we focus on when we talk about immigration and illegal immigrants in the country. Because remember, some people come into the country legally and then decide to stay. And where do they come from? Are we focusing on them? Are we looking at what sort of impact they are having on our country, on our labor market, uh, on everything, uh, social cohesion and everything else in this country? Uh, we haven't touched on that as yet, but let's take a quick break and then Blaine will come back and uh, give us more questions from the floor. Welcome back. You're watching Elections 360 as we are entering the tail end of the conversation. Time is off the essence, so let's get straight into it with regards to our live audience and their questions. Your name and your questions. I'm uh, speaking to Polani Nala, student of uh, politics at the Vets. So my question is for the EFF. I think they are failing us in uh, addressing the practicality of what they're going to do with the issue of the porous borders, right? What are borders looking like for the EFF if we are not going to have borders? And the second question uh, goes around the attitude of uh, South Africans uh, about uh, immigrants, right? We know that uh, there have been a xenophobic attitude that have risen because of illegal uh, or fake goods that are sold in uh, our spaza shops. So what have been the implementation in dealing with those kind of things? All right, thank you very much indeed. Ma'am? Good evening. I am Dr. Mausoline Duplessy from the Patriotic Alliance. I just want to sway this in another way to say that uh, I'm not going to look at analysis or research and I'm not here to educate anyone, but I come here as a concerned citizen who's on the ground. You know, you cannot, our system have created this uh, for, for, for illegal immigrants to come and deplete our resources. So uh, South Africa is not poor, but it is poorly managed. Because how do I say to a, a patient coming in who is an illegal citizen, I, I can't catch your baby? Mm -hmm. You know? And how do you, how do you say that uh, there's not free care for illegal immigrants. So my question is to the ANC, uh, you've orchestrated the system uh, for us to be inclusive but actually exclusive. So how are you going to correct it? And the next one is to His Excellency Gaten McKenzie. Uh, I want to know from you, uh, sir, uh, if we got, obviously we're going to be, uh, 20, 29 May, we're going to take over the country. So uh, I just want to know, that's a fact, that's a fact. I just want to know that I hear from the EFF, they, they, they brag to say that the kids are hiking to school. Uh, and that is a creative, what are you going to do? Because now, even us, 
we, the, the system is an extension of apartheid regime. How are you going to bring, other than bringing God back to school, how are you going to uh, restore our education system? All right, I think we've got to the you. point. Thank you very much indeed. Let's try one more question here, then I'll go across. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is, my name is Tembelo Machola. My question is to Action SA's Funzin Gobeni. In your policies, there's uh, a part that speaks to uh, charging uh, companies who hire illegal immigrants. Do you think this is enough to, to fight the, 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 the scourge of illegal immigrants? All right, thank you very much indeed. Let's go across very quickly because time is of the essence. And I guess the general sentiment is that you can't reduce poverty and inequality without rooting out corruption, right? To what extent are we capacitating the state? To what extent are we capacitating officials to do that? Your name and your question. My name is Anneli Tessi from the U.S. of First World Rand. I have a question for Mr. Mani. My question is, we have drugs coming into our country, we have counterfeit, and how is the EFF planning to mediate that? Because trafficking is a huge problem considering that we have high rates of GBV and femicide in our country. Yeah. How can you put, it, put us at ease that immigration will help us to uh, be free from that? All right, thank you. One more question here. Sure, hi. I have actually a comment to um, the Patriotic Alliance leader. Um, how can you, in the same breath, endorse constitutional ideals of non-discrimination, non, um, non like not being stereotypical, and in that same breath, blame immigrants for crime and, and blame them for like every other problem that exists in South Africa? I think that is a very incompetent way to look at governance, and you're basically just looking for loopholes. The problem with um, South Africa is the government itself not immigrants. Immigrants are not the reason we don't have jobs. They are not the reason we, are, we are have so, has such high crimes, levels of crime. All right. One more, one more. Secondly, I think none of you guys have addressed this, but what about education and access to education for immigrant children that are stateless, children that are not acknowledged by their own governments as citizens and by our government as citizens? These children don't have access to education. All right, thank you very much indeed. Let's, let's throw it back to uh, Sakina. What, what about cross-border crime as well? We yeah. know the well-documented cases of areas in KwaZulu-Natal like Umtlabu Yalengana. Those have been reported in terms of cross-border crime syndicates. What is being done? Sakina? Thanks, Blaine. Dr. Motswaledi. Sakina, at long last, Funzi is starting to talk sense. And because you are in government, when we talk sense, we will acknowledge. He says we need technology, and we agree. We have already started ordering it. We are not saying we are still going to. We have ordered 18 drones, which are going to be used at the borders. We have ordered four speedboats. We have ordered 500 handheld gadgets that can identify you just by putting your fingerprint there. Uh, mm. That the guy very briefly, you, very briefly, uh, Dr. Motsaledi. It's, it's better to listen. Uh, that the guy said, I don't believe you have said South, Af South Africa has got more problems than Zimbabwe. When Zimbabweans are actually coming here in large numbers, I don't believe you said so. All right. But let's leave it. Um, we are the, out of time, the last so one. Yeah, we... the last one. Uh, and, and that uh, 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 man, the, the, the what you call, don't build a house before roofing it. The issues that you are talking about, which you said you must solve, which Europe has solved, Europe took 100 years, and you must still solve them. All right. Those people. Thank you. Uh, yeah. All right. I'm going to give all of you, from Mr. Ngobeni coming back, excluding yeah. Dr. Mutsaledi, a quick half a minute to just wrap it up. We are out of no, time. No, no, thank you very much, Sakina. And uh, the, the, the question from, um, from the lady that uh, we are not focusing on... Uh, uh, we, well, the, the issue is not illegal foreigners, it's, it's government. We agree with her. And that is why we need to remove these ones. That is why we have to remove them. Because they, they, they have failed both South Africans and migrants as well. Um, so we, they, we need to remove them. That must already, we also need to ask you. You are telling us to go and read this and that. You must ask the president to read those things before he brings money illegal into the country. Mr. McKenzie. Mr. McKenzie. Now, you know, for us, I just want to say that uh, it's not only the government that's at fault. It's also illegal foreigners. For us as the Patriotic Alliance, I can't argue with the lady that says illegal foreigners is not a problem. How do I even start to argue with a person? 
if 12% of our convicted uh, prisoners are illegal foreigners. I am saying to you, Sakina, what we need to do in conclusion, this country needs a reset. We need to be tough on illegal foreigners. We have a crisis, and you can see now, people are saying there's no problem here. Vote for a party like the PA that knows there's a problem. Thank you. Mr. Manye, Mr. Manye, 30 yeah. seconds. Thank you. Uh, Sakina, once again, I think we must see the bigger picture. The EFF, the EFF, the EFF will... Uh, Mr. Manny, we're running out of time. Yeah, the, EF, the EFF will establish a sovereign wealth fund. With that sovereign wealth fund, we'll make sure that there is enough funding to be able to do a thing that the country needs to do. The reason we're fighting, we're fighting over a little bone. The EFF wants to make sure that we build a bigger economy uh, that will also transcend South Africa and get to the rest of the continent. It's important that uh, we do not feed into hating each other. Remember that 60% of your water yes, in Gauteng comes from Lesotho. We must remember that. We must remember that we have, a, we have an opportunity to build relationship with the DRC. The DRC okay. with hydroelectricity can make sure that we can liberate a lot Mr. of Ruiz. megawatts for the rest of the continent. Mr. Ruiz? Mr. Ruiz, we're out of time. 30 seconds quickly. Okay, so, so the one audience member, the one audience member said that uh, foreigners depleted our resources. But as far as I remember, foreigners were, have not been in charge for the last 30 years. It's the ANC that has depleted our resources. And one of the tragedies, I'm glad statelessness was brought up, because, because of the fact that corruption rules everything that is done in our immigration system, and this is the first thing that needs to be fixed before we spend 1.2 trillion, it means that South African children cannot get documented. So in our schools today, there are over half a million South African children that cannot get documented. Mm. Because this government said we're going to make it more difficult for late registrations of birth because foreigners are trying to get in. All right. So Thanks, we need Mr. to get Ruiz. real and we need honest clean government. 30 seconds. Yeah. Th thank you very much, Sakina. None, we never said as ANC that there are no problems. If we thought there were no problems, we wouldn't be changing the eggs, we wouldn't be passing the white paper, we won't be coming with new methods. Secondly, in that demand, I think you must not mislead people and say when economy is growing, we won't talk immigration. Even rich countries are still talking about immigration when the economy is growing. Even after we've grown right. the economy, That's we'll still talk about immigration. That's all our time for this evening. We gotta and go, we gotta go. That's it, that's it. So that is this evening's edition, the very first of Elections 360. Thanks so much to the wonderful audience and our panel, uh, the ANC, the DA, EFF, Patriotic Alliance, and of course, Action SA. Next week, we're in KwaZulu-Natal, the battle for the soul of that province. Join us then, bye-bye.